Welcome to another video, my AP Calc Champions. In this problem, we're going to be talking about this region. So this problem says, let R be the region enclosed by the graphs G of X is equal to this, H of X is equal to this, the Y axis, and the vertical line X equals 2 as shown in the figure above. Problem 8 asks us to find the area of R. We're defining the area of R as, you know, the space here. And the way that we're going to solve for it is finding the integral from our top function minus our bottom function. And that's going to be from the points that it's valid for, uh, which, as mentioned, it's bounded by the y-axis. So that would be where x equals 0 and vertical line x equals 2. So that would be x equals 2. So we're taking the integral from 0 to 2 of the top function minus the bottom function. All right, and this is where we need to be a little bit careful. Notice that they didn't actually label which function is g of x and which one is the h of x. So we're gonna want to go ahead and figure that out first before we try to make any assumptions. So we know that our top function has the point two comma four, and it also has the point zero comma four. So let's go ahead and plug in two and zero and see if we get four for h of x. So h of, uh, let's do 2 first, h of 2 is equal to 6 minus 2 times 2 minus 1 squared. So this is 1 minus 1 squared, 6 minus 2 times 1, which is 4. Awesome, yeah, that seemed to have worked. Now just to be safe, let's check another point, so 0. So 6 minus 2, 0 minus 1 squared. So this is going to be 6 minus 2 minus 1 squared is just going to be 1. So we're going to get that this is also 4. So it looks like it checks out that this is that this top function is h of x. If you wanted to, there's also some distinct points on the bottom function. So it looks like 2 and minus 5 and uh, 0 and 1 for the bottom function. So you can go ahead and plug those in to g of x and see if they make sense. I'm just going to base this off of the fact that our h of x worked, that our top function is h of x and our bottom function is g of x. So we can go ahead and do this from 0 to 2 of h of x minus g of x dx. And then uh, since this is a no calculator problem, unfortunately, we're going to have to solve for this by hand. So I actually prefer splitting them out like this just because I think especially with this problem, the interval of all this stuff gets a little messy really fast. So you can go ahead and keep it as one integral. I'm, I'm just going to split it up into two so you can see the distinct steps that I'm taking. Okay, so this first one, solving for zero, the integral from zero to two of h of x, where h of x is six minus two x minus one squared, all this dx. This is going to be equal to, so since the derivative of x minus 1 is just going to be d of x, uh, since there's no constants outside of the x, we can sort of just treat this as like an x. Um, if this was something more complicated, like let's say like 2x minus 2 or something like that, we might want to use u substitution, but since it's pretty simple, we can go ahead and just use the power rule for integration. So take the integral, our 6 is now going to be a 6x, and then our x minus 1 is going to be to the power of 3, and then we're going to divide our constant by the exponent plus 1, so we're going to get 2 over 3 out front, and then this is going to be from 0 to 2, so we go ahead and plug in 2 first, 2 minus 1 cubed, and then all of this minus, we plug in 0. Okay, so uh, we get 12 minus 2 thirds times 1 to the cubed is just going to be 1. So you can basically just get rid of this. So we get 12 minus 2 thirds minus, it looks like 6 times 0, this just goes away. So we get minus 2 thirds times minus 1 cubed. So before when we were cubing one, it didn't matter because we didn't have a negative sign, but now that we're doing minus one times minus one times minus one, you'll notice that these two are gonna cancel out, but then we still have a negative. So we're gonna get minus one for our minus one cubed. So if we distribute our negative, we're gonna now get plus two thirds. So then we get 12 minus four thirds for our uh, first part of the problem. So that's going to be the integral from 0 to 2 of h of x. 
All right, moving on to the integral from 0 to 2 of g of x. Let's go ahead and solve that. 0 to 2 of g of x dx. What is our g of x? Our g of x is 0 to 2 of minus 2 plus 3 cosine of pi over 2x. All of that dx. Once again here, we're going to want to just take the integral. So we're going to get this minus 2 becomes a minus 2x. Then the integral of cosine is sine. And notice we don't need to worry about the sine changes at all because uh, the derivative of sine is just cosine. If, for example, we were taking the integral of sine, then we would have had to worry about the sine. <laughs> Uh, I didn't even mean to make that joke, but we would have had to worry about the sine because the derivative of cosine is negative sine. But since we're integrating cosine, we don't need to worry about the sines. So we get sine pi over 2x. And then if we were to take the derivative of our sine of pi over 2 times x, what would we need our constant out front to look like such that we remain with 3 at the end? Well, we're going to be multiplying something by pi over 2 to get x times pi over 2 to get 3, so we're going to uh, divide both sides by pi over 2 to get 6 over pi. 6 over pi out front. And then this is going to be from 0 to 2. Let's go ahead and plug that in. So we get minus 2 times 2 plus 6 over pi sine of pi over 2 times 2. And all of that's minus, we plug in 0 now. 6 over pi sine of pi over 2 times 0. So we get minus 4 plus 6 over pi times sine of pi. What does sine look like? So remember that our sine of x, it starts at 0, 0, and then it looks like this, where at pi over 2, it's at 1, and then at pi, it's at 0. If we're trying to calculate sine of pi over 2 times 2, that would be sine of pi. So sine of pi would end up being 0. So this whole thing just ends up being 0. Then we're subtracting. So minus 2 times 0 is just going to be 0. We're going to get 6 pi times sine of pi over 2 times 0. This is the same thing as sine of 0. So this is also just going to be 0. So the second term also doesn't really matter too much. So basically, the integral from 0 to 2 of g of x is just going to be minus 4. So remember that we're subtracting the integral from 0 to 2 of h of x from the integral from 0 to 2 of g of x. So what we got for that first thing was 12 minus 4 over 3. And then we're going to be subtracting minus 4. If we wanted to simplify this, we can go ahead and have a denominator of 3. So we would have 36 over 3 minus 4 over 3 uh, minus minus would be a plus. So plus 12 over 3. So this ends up being 32 over 3 plus 12 over 3, which is 44 over 3. That's our final answer for part A. Kind of took us a long time to get there, but hey, that's what happens with these non-calculator problems. Moving on to the next problem, we get that region R is the base of a solid. For the solid at each x, the cross section perpendicular to the x-axis has the area A of x is equal to 1 over x plus 3. Find the volume of the solid. So this problem is basically telling us that if we extended our R up like this, so dashed R up like this, you know, it's some sort of solid and we're trying to find the volume of it. So it's telling us that these cross sections within the solid, the area of them is 1 over x plus 3. So remember that if we're finding the volume, that is going to be the integral of area. So we're adding up each of these tiny little areas within the solid to find the volume. And from what bounds are we going to be doing that? Well, we're going to be doing it from the same bounds that we found the area of the actual region, which was from 0 to 2. So the volume is going to be the integral from 0 to 2 of uh, the area, which is 1 over x plus 3 dx. This is one of those special integrals that you should be able to identify very quickly. Remember that 1 over x plus a is just going to be the, if you take the integral of that, it's just going to be ln of uh, the absolute value of 
x plus a. So we can apply that same logic here to get that the integral of 1 over th x plus 3 dx is equal to ln of x plus 3, and this is going to be from 0 to 2. So then we just plug in our x, so we get ln of 2 plus 3 minus ln of 0 plus 3. So we end up getting ln of 5 minus ln of 3. In the solution, you'll actually notice that it doesn't have absolute value bars. The reason why is because x plus 3 is greater than 0 on the interval. Um, so we don't actually need to take the absolute value of anything. Uh, you can go ahead and even simplify this using log concepts into ln of 5 over 3 if you wanted to. But um, I think it's perfectly fine if you were to leave it in this state as well. Moving on to the last problem, it says write but do not evaluate an integral expression that gives the volume of the solid generated when r is rotated about the horizontal line y equals 6. All right, so make sure you read this very carefully. It says write but do not evaluate. If you are evaluating this, you're just going to end up wasting some of the time that you could have spent on other problems. So it says to give the volume of the solid generated when it's rotated about the horizontal line y equals 6. So if I zoom in a little bit here, our line y equals 6 is going to be right here. And what we're doing is we're rotating our R around that. So when we had these areas making up the region of R, what's going to be happening is now that region is rotated around Y equals 6. six. So now we've got kind of circle, an inner circle, an outer circle as well. So we need to figure out the area of the outer circle and the area of the inner circle and subtract the two to get the actual area of the region R rotated around the horizontal line. So basically what we're using here is our washer method. So to sort of help you visualize this, here is what this looks like when you rotate R along the horizontal line y equals 6. So remember that the equation for the washer method is from some a to some b, it's going to be pi times the integral from a to b of your big R squared minus your little r squared br. And the reason why is we've got a hole here that we don't want to find the area of, so we need to subtract the two areas. So in this problem, we're going to have pi times, once again, we're using those same bounds. Our region is from 0 to 2, so that's going to be our bounds for the volume. So our outer radius is going to be from y equals 6 to the bottom curve. So what would we define that as? Well, we would just say 6 minus the equation of the bottom curve, which is g of x. And then all that squared. And then our inner area is going to be 6 minus our top curve, right? So there, this section we don't actually want to calculate the volume of. So this is going to be minus 6 minus h of x squared dx. And then if I turn this all into one color, this is what our final answer for part c is. Make sure to remember the pi out front. Um, it can be really easy to forget it. We're using our washer method here to get rid of this area here that we don't actually want to calculate. Hopefully that helps you out with this AP Calculus problem. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them down below and I'll get back to you. And I hope you have a great rest of your day.